Hi there, welcome to the Upcycle Design Lab. My name's Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials. If you're new here, I hope you'll stick around and check out some of my other upcycling tutorials. And if you like what you see, you can check the subscribe button below any of my videos to become a subscriber. Also, if you'd like to be notified when I upload new videos, be sure to check the bell icon as well. So what do I have going on in the lab today? Well, if you saw my last video, you know I was working with some watch parts to make some earrings. And in this video, I'm going to be using some more watch parts to make some custom homemade luggage tags. What I love about this project is that it not only uses some watch parts that I no longer have a use for, but it also utilizes plastic bags. And if you pay attention, you can find plastic bags in a lot of different bright, fun colors, which allows you to really come up with a fun, customizable design. All right, so for this project, I'm gonna be using a couple different glues. I have my E6000 glue that I like to apply with a little toothpick or wooden skewer. Just helps to get the glue where I want it to go. And then I have a small soft paint brush to apply my Mod Podge glue. For some cutting tools, I have a cutting mat and my rotary cutter. You can just use scissors if you wanted to. And um, a ruler is also helpful. You need your template, whatever your size or shape you want to use. I have a couple of watches here that I'm going to be using the watch bands. And if you missed my last video, that's where we used the watch faces. So check that out. Uh, some painter's tape is helpful. You're going to need uh, sewing needles, some heavy duty thread in the color, whatever color you choose. And then the last things that you need are the great recycled materials. So this is a lot of different plastic bags that I've saved. If you pay attention, you can find a lot of different colors. The newspaper bags come in a variety of colors. This is actually a mailing envelope, but it's kind of a nice silver color. And of course you can use just regular grocery bags as well. You need a little bit of parchment paper and an iron. And the last thing I'm going to be using is this clear plastic container. This uh, held some strawberries, but you can use any clear plastic container with a flat side. So I just wanted to briefly talk about the template quickly. You can certainly make them any size or shape that you want to, but for the template that I made, um, I made it two and a half inches wide, then it's four inches long with the little end piece being another inch. And to make the tapered edges, I measured in 3 eighths of an inch on both sides and then cut the angle so that I have a little tag shape. So the first thing we're going to do here is make the strap for the luggage tag. And to do that, I'm going to use my watch pieces. I want to cut the band off as close as I can to the end here and as straight as I can. And I'll set this part aside. Looks like I need to clean up this edge a little bit because we're going to kind of put them back together. And to do that, I'm going to use my E6000 glue and a little bit of the uh, painter's tape. You could probably use masking tape too. You want to just a little bit of tape to hold everything secure and to kind of fill in the edges or the ends here. What am I trying to say? I want to cover this gap on the edges of the watch band. So I've got that and I'm going to put a little bit of glue in the gap there too. because you want a more permanent hold than you're going to get from this tape. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my heavy duty thread in the color that matches.
and I'm just going to add a little bit more glue. And I'm going to wrap the thread around the, to cover the tape and to secure this joint here. So I just want kind of a thin layer of the E6000 glue. And like I said, I want to come past the tape because I want to wrap. What do I want to say here? I want to wrap past the tape. So I'm just going to kind of secure the thread under the tape and start a couple of wraps just to secure it. And then I'll go outside the tape and just start winding. And I'm going to try to get just one layer of thread kind of lined up next to each other. And if I need to, I'll add some more glue. I'm just going to keep wrapping until I have the tape covered and maybe past it by about an eighth of an inch on the other. the end I'm gonna cut a little bit of a tail off and I'll use my needle to just kind of weave the end back through and tie it off so I want to work on the back of the band and like I said I'm just gonna start by weaving it through a few threads I'm kind of staying over to one edge where there isn't a lot of glue And then I'm just going to go back up a little ways and down through, pick up a few stitches behind the last stitch, go through some more. And after you've done a few, you can just go through longer and longer pieces until you feel comfortable that you've got your thread tied off. And then you can just cut the end off. And the last thing I want to do for the band is I just want to make sure that uh, all of my threads are kind of glued together and secured. So I'm going to take a small paintbrush and just brush on a thin coat of the Mod Podge. And I'm going to try just to get it on the thread portion. If you get a little bit on the watch band itself, it's not the end of the world. But if you're careful, you should be able to just get the Mod Podge on the thread area. And that'll just secure everything a little bit more. So once that's done, I'm going to set this aside to dry and then we'll move ahead making the plastic bag fabric. So a couple of things when you're fusing plastic, you want to be sure you're uh, in a well ventilated area because it is a little bit stinky. There's some, you know, you're melting plastic. So do this with caution. Um, you want about six layers of the base what I call fabric. So I have cut up an old garbage bag here. You can see that it's been used. It's all stretched out. There's some holes in it, but that's just fine. I've chosen a kind of a cleaner layer for the top and the bottom, but like I said, you can use damaged bags. It doesn't really matter. So I've got six layers cut here, and now I'm just going to kind of experiment with some. I've cut out a few little hearts here out of some red plastic. And I think I'm going to add a little bit of purple. And I'm just going to kind of play around with the design until I have it the way I like it. And then we'll go to the, the iron and kind of pressing it all together.
So here's my crazy design. It, everything's gonna shrink up a little bit when we uh, iron it. So I've got my iron heating on a medium heat setting. You can always turn it up if you need to, but medium is a good place to start. And I have some brown paper uh, protecting my table surface. And then you, you can use brown paper, but I like to use the parchment paper on the top just because you can kind of see through it and make sure that your design isn't moving around a lot because there is a lot of static with this plastic. So I didn't get it lined up very well. See what I mean? Plastic moving everywhere. Anyway, the fun part about this is that it's just going to shrink everything up and kind of change the shape of everything. So we'll see what we end up with when we're done. But I'm just going to get my plastic out of here. You don't want plastic on your iron. A little paperweight. All right, there we go. And then I'm going to just slowly pass the iron back and forth. Moving slowly, but kind of moving from the center out to the edges. And you want to make one pass over the whole thing. And then you can kind of check it. Probably not everything is stuck down really well. So I'm going to go over this side one more time. And then I'll flip it over and iron it once on the back side as well. fun part you can get really creative and do all kinds of different designs so like I said I just need to do one quick pass on the back here And that is how easy it is to fuse plastic. So just to show you another uh, idea, I'm gonna use a gray background now. I've got eight layers because I wanna make it just a little bit thicker. Um, you can leave the print on or if you're interested, I did a whole video on how to prepare ba uh, plastic bags for crafting. And you can take the print off if you want to. This is going to be on the inside, so I'm not really that worried about it. And I'm making kind of small patterns here because we're going to be doing the luggage tags, which are small. So I'm just trying to make sort of a background uh, print. But you can certainly do larger or smaller prints. You can make big pieces of plastic uh, by just fusing layers, you know, cutting and layering them and then fusing them. So there's a lot of things that you can do with this. There's just no way I'm going to be able to video without dog barking. We actually have five right now, so it's not going to get quiet in here. Anyway, um, like I said, this is just a fun way to use your imagination. You can certainly do more intricate designs. I'm just trying to get some sort of background that will be sort of colorful and bright to make the luggage tags out of. If you're interested, also, I will put a link in the comment section of this video. My sister has made a lot of really pretty uh, plastic bag designs. 
and she's made uh, totes and all kinds of things out of them. So I'll link to her website and you can just check out some other things for inspiration or if you want to purchase something, you can do that too. It's always kind of interesting to see how it turns out after you iron it because most of the plastic bags are kind of translucent so the colors blend together. This orange is a different kind of bag so I don't know what it's going to do but it'll be interesting. We're going to find out. A lot of it is just sort of experimentation. So the next step is to cut out the tag itself. And for each tag, you're gonna need two of the little templates. So you can either use the rotary cutter or your scissors to do the cutting. And if you want to, you can really think about how you want things centered. I just kind of cut things randomly and let, let the design end up however it ends up, but it's entirely up to you. And I have my template cut out of uh, cardstock, so if I'm careful, I can cut the fabric without cutting my template, and I don't need to use a ruler. If you're using scissors to cut out the fabric, I like to use some binder clips just to hold everything in place rather than using straight pins. It's just a little easier. So there's our first piece and I'm going to cut one more. So I've got my two pieces here and I, this one's a little bit prettier print wise so I'm going to make this the back piece of the luggage tag and this will be cut out with the opening for the name and address to show through. So what I want to do is set this piece aside and then I'm going to mark from the bottom of this piece I'm going to mark up four inches and I just have a white gel pen here that I'm using to draw my line so I'm going to cut on that line and I'll set this piece aside too because I want to save it and then on this piece, I'm going to flip it over so my gel pen doesn't show up as much. It does come off, but it's just easier if you don't mark on the right side of the fabric, I guess. And I'm going to mark a, a line 3 8 of an inch all the way around. And then I'm just going to cut out this center part. I like to use my rotary cutter just to get this line started and then I clean it up with my scissors, or I cut the, I get it started and then I'll cut it out with my scissors. And then you can save this piece or throw it away. This is the part you want for your luggage tag. So you're going to have these three pieces when you're done. This might be a little hard to see, but hopefully you can tell. Um, this is the piece of the plastic strawberry container. And what I want to do with it is I want to cut a piece that's just a little bit smaller than my frame piece here. So I'm going to set it in from the edges a little bit, about halfway, clip it on those two sides. And then I'm just going to cut along the edge of this piece here.
And now I have my plastic uh, protection for the address card. So the next thing I'm going to do is the I'm going to stitch everything together. And you can sew this plastic on a sewing machine. I'm not sure about this uh, clear plastic. It's a little heavier, so you might want to be careful if you're using a nice brand new machine. I'm going to do hand sewing just because I kind of like to hand sew and I, I sort of like the homemade finish it gives. So I'm going to use my heavy duty thread and I want a fairly long piece because I want to be able to go all the way around and not have to add thread. So I've got a knot in my at the end of my thread here and you're going to want to use a thimble if you're hand sewing because it's kind of hard to get the needle through the plastic, especially this clear piece. So I'm going to sew along the top edge that will be open. So just deciding on the design which one I want to be the open end. I'm going to stitch across the top edge here. And I want my knot to be in the back. You can use clips for this too. It kind of helps to hold everything together while you're sewing. So I'm just going to start kind of stitching along the middle edge of this 3 quarter inch piece of frame that I have. And I want to hide my knot in the back so I'm going to come through the back side to start with. And then I'm just going to make some small stitches all the way across. So I've made it all the way across the top with my stitching and now I'm ready to sew the two pieces together. So I'm going to grab my back piece and I'm just going to line everything up, the bottom and the side edges, and I'll go ahead and use my clips to hold it together. And I'm going to go ahead and go through all the layers now. And I'll continue sewing around the edge all the way back up to the top. I'm going to put a couple of tiny stitches in the corner here just to secure it really tightly before I start moving on around the edge. If you're using contrasting thread you might not want to do that if it shows up a lot but I think it's better just to have a couple of extra stitches right there in the corners because this is where you're going to be sliding the tag in and out. So I'm going to just continue sewing all the way around until I get back up to the other edge here. So I finished stitching all the way around and I'm back to the top. I put a couple of little reinforcement stitches in there and I'm ready to add my last piece. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in place and clip it on. And I'm going to sew all the way around the edge and across the top edge and that will just leave this one edge open to slide the card, the address card in and out. So what I'm going to do to start this is I'm going to come through the back. I'm, I've got my thread through the back here. I'm going to come through and kind of angle it up so that I can catch my first stitch right where I want it on this top piece. So I'm hiding my long stitch kind of inside the two layers. Hopefully you can see this. The black might not have been the best color to show you this, but I've sewed all the way around this piece, all four sides. My thread is still on here, and I'm going to go ahead and cut the little hole to insert 
the strap into. You can mark it and cut it more accurately if you want to. I've kind of just cheated a little and made a couple of little cuts and then cut out a rectangle shape that's roughly the size of my watch band. And then what I'm going to do, I've tied off my thread here with a couple little knots, but what I'm going to try to do is just bury the needle between the two layers of plastic. You could start a whole new thread, but I kind of like to not have extra knots in mine, so I'm just going to bury the needle between the two layers and come up where I'm ready to make a stitch. And then I'll stitch all the way around here, and we'll be ready to put the little strap on. So once you've gotten all the way around, you can do a couple of little tie-off stitches to secure the thread. And then once again, I'm just going to bury the needle, kind of starting in the where the thread is, making one last little stitch, and then burying the needle between the two layers again, just so I have a longer tail to leave on it. So wherever it comes out. Go ahead and let it pull out and then I'm just going to cut that thread off. So once you've finished your sewing you're ready to go ahead and add your strap and you can just slip it right through and buckle it or throw it on your suitcase if you're ready to do that. And then I just have a little piece of cardstock here to put your name and address on. So one other idea I had for this is it's the right size for a gift card, so it could make a cute graduation gift if you were sending your somebody off to college and you wanted to give them a cute little luggage tag to use and then also you could put a gift card inside as another gift. Anyway, like I said, there's a lot of uh, ways to customize. You can do different prints like I did on these. You can do sort of more of an applique stitch to add a little fun to the design. I live in Colorado, so I made a Colorado flag. So that's it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this fun and cheerful project. And if you have a few extra watch straps left over from your earrings that we made last week, go ahead and give this idea a try. I hope you'll come back soon and check out what's going on here in the lab. I think I have one more watch project going for next week. And then you never know what's going to happen when you're playing with trash. So I hope to see you soon back here in the lab.